Welcome into another episode of Bill's Pod Squad. Maddie Glab here with my co-host, Bill's owner and team president, Kim Pagula. An exciting first round of the playoffs. Who knew that the Buffalo Bills were just going to go ahead and put up 47 points and beat the Patriots by 30 points. It was an epic win, Kim. I'm sure it was so much fun to watch, knowing that every single drive we had on offense, they scored a touchdown until they started to kneel down. I mean, what was it like watching that game from your vantage point? Wow, it was it was amazing. Like, I, you know, early on, I kept waiting for the shoe to drop, you know, like, oh, we're doing so well. Like, OK, what's what's going to happen now? Right. Because games don't necessarily go that perfectly. And especially, Josh, except for like four incomplete passes, I, I don't know how you get better now. I'm, I'm sure, you know, um, the football folks, you know, find a lot of ways that they can improve on that game. But as a fan, I don't know how it could get much better than what happened Saturday night. Yeah, I completely agree. It seemed like our fans were super happy and excited to be there. I'm sure everyone watching from home felt the exact same way. I mean, it was like the perfect scenario the entire game. Uh, touchdown after touchdown after touchdown. I mean, Josh threw for five touchdowns. That that was a team record for the Buffalo Bills in the playoffs. So <laughs> he's just continuing to make and break all these records, which has just been amazing to watch from my point of view, I'm sure from your point of view as well. But what was what was the day? What did the day entail for you? Um, knowing that it was a late kickoff, what were you up to? Anything different happened leading up to the game or at the end of the game since it did end pretty late? Well, because of the cold weather, I didn't, it was just a very long day. So it, it was funny because I got to the stadium earlier than normal. And I got to the stadium around one o'clock. At first I was like, I got to hurry, you know, to this, um, well, this, when I say stadium, I'm talking about our offices there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'm like, I got to get to the office so we can, you know, watch the, the game, you know, ahead of us. And I remember, oh, there is no one o'clock game. <laughs> um, it didn't start till four. So there was a lot of waiting around. And then you know, especially ones with the enhanced protocols and of us having such a late game. Um, I'm like walking around the offices going, where is everybody? What's going on? Like, this is the playoffs. Where's the energy? And there's like, maybe like three people there, right? <laughs> so none of the coaches were in yet. Not um, many of the players were not there yet. Staff in general were not there. Uh, so it was a little bit lonely and long there at the early part of the day. But then once four o'clock hit, then things started to really uh, to speed up there. And it, it was just a long, long wait. Um, I did brave the outside. We didn't have our usual, you know, sideline, um, you know, fans on the sidelines uh, pregame uh, because of the weather and, and worrying about that. And I will say it was cold, Maddie. I don't know if you if you went down on the sidelines. I did go down. I wasn't there as long as I usually am. I could not feel my lips. I felt like I got Novocaine when I go to the dentist and you like, you know, you just kind of can't feel it. Um, it, it, was, it was mighty cold. Um, and so having a win like that for our fans who did brave the cold for the whole game and the, the stadium didn't empty. Like they were there, they were, I mean, I about, I'm gonna say like maybe the halfway between the first uh, quarter, you know, I went out into the clubs um, and, there was nobody in there. And I for sure thought, oh my gosh, they're going to be crowded because everyone's going to try to stay warm. And then throughout the game, you look outside, nobody left. And um, so what a testament to our fan base, to the Bills Mafia, and for the team to put up that kind of win uh, for them and the fans being able to get there um, and see that in person. I'm sure it's going to be one of those you know, where were you at that game? And what is one of your, you know, best memorable games in Bill's history for those fans that were there? I, it's got to be in their top five. Yeah, it was a night to remember. My dad came into town for the Amy's from Chicago. And so I was asking him after the game, you know, were you cold? Did you stay outside? What, what was the deal? Like, I would expect, you know, everybody to kind of go inside. He was like, no, we went inside like for halftime to get some more drinks and food, but we stayed outside. You're only cold if you're losing. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's, uh, that is so true. It was a really a fun night. And then just, you know, anticipating. Um, it was a little, it was nice on Sunday to kind of sit back and relax and just wait to see what's going to unfold. Um, and then knowing, you know, end up knowing who we end up playing uh, this week. Um, of course, Kansas City 
uh, but it's nice to get those games under the uh, under your belt, and then you can just go ahead and plan and looking forward to going to KC again um, this weekend. Yeah, it seems like now it's just, you know, you get to the playoffs and the Chiefs are in your way at some point, whether it's going to be the divisional round or whether it's going to be the AFC championship game. You've just got to beat the Chiefs to get to the Super Bowl. And so we have that contest coming up this weekend, Sunday night game. And speaking of the Chiefs, we have Mitch Morse on our podcast this week, the center for the Buffalo Bills. He has been one consistent piece to the, uh, this offensive line that's shifted so much throughout the season. Mitch actually got drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs and spent some time in KC before coming to Buffalo four seasons before coming to the Buffalo Bills. So he's gotten to be on uh, two explosive offenses since coming into the NFL. He's pretty lucky uh, in that way. So we're going to talk to him just about his season uh, and what he thinks about this year's team and and also a, a new child in his life. Um, his wife him? just had a new baby. So looking forward to talk to him about that as well. So let's get to our interview with Mitch. Mitch, thank you for being on with us. We know it's a busy week for you as you guys prepare for the second round of the playoffs. There's a lot going on, but I feel like for you, there's just even more going on. I mean, you have had a wild past two weeks. Uh, you told us that you had a new baby, a baby boy, uh, the day after you won the AFC East. And then that Saturday, Saturday, you guys go and win the wild card game against the Patriots. So a whirlwind of events, lots of happy things, though. That's the great part is you've had a lot of happy life events happen within the last like seven or eight days. So how has the last week been for you and your wife, Caitlin? Honestly, I appreciate you asking. Um, professionally and personally, it's been a tremendous seven days. A whirlwind, like you said, um, but so much was going on and my wife took on so much for me. Um, she's a superstar and, uh, you know, she's just doing great. Made my, made my transition from there to here a lot easier. Um, it was just a beautiful thing, both professionally and, fit and uh, personally, and I couldn't ask for any more. Well, we think that you should have a baby every year um, during the playoffs. So, so definitely is is possible. You got to take that up with my wife. <laughs> well, it takes two, you know, Mitch. I, it's a family podcast, Kim. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, it's great. <laughs> Mitch, you got to be there, though, uh, for the birth of your son. I know you talked to the media just about being able to be there. It's not easy to get away, especially in the postseason, let alone during the regular season. Here we are in the postseason, um, and you were able to get away um, to be a part of that uh, and then come back to Buffalo, obviously. But what does it mean to you knowing that you got to take some time off from football to be there for your family and with your family? Yeah, it was something that... Um... When I got to Buffalo in 2019, one of the things that from the top to bottom they preached uh, was that family does come first, right? And, um, you know, it was an exceptional moment when we found out we were pregnant, but we also understood the timing was a little bit uh, towards the very end of the season, kind of that, 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 that sweet spot right there. So um, I think transparency was huge. I went and met with coach a few times, just kind of giving them updates on what could happen. We walked through scenarios and not once did he say anything except to go take care of your business, handle your family business. And, uh, and then, you know, we talked about timeframes and getting back and it was, you know, from top to bottom, very gracious with the uh, organization. And then um, was back here for practice you guys were, it was, it was a really fun environment. You know, it felt like everyone was um, a part of that and uh, shoot, I couldn't have asked for any more. Well, you were drafted by the Chiefs, and so this is a familiar team uh, for you. And I know we've played, uh, obviously, last year in the AFC Championship and all, but what is it, what is it like going back to uh, a team, a city that you've been a part of? Um, you know, nowadays, not many players stick with one team their whole career, so it's nothing new. But I always, you know, wonder what it's like for these players um, going back to a team that you were on before. Yeah, it's I, w I wouldn't lie to you if it's a uh, I think the novelty of it is kind of kind of gone away as the more you play them. But uh, it's an interesting deal walking through that tunnel um, just on the on, on, on the different sideline. And, uh, you know, you 
even if we're on different teams, there's so many personal experience, you know, relationships, whether it be, uh, you know, equipment staff or something like that. But once the whistle hit, blows, you're in game mode. You kind of forget all about that. Um, you know, there's family in the stands. Uh, there's almost a sort of familiarity, which makes it comfortable, even on the opposing sidelines. So um, it'll be it's just a fun place to play. And it's a, it's a fun place to, uh, you know, because even the away team kind of feeds off that environment, much like here in Buffalo. You know, when, you know the, the other team's got to feel the juices flowing when that crowd's going, let's go Buffalo. It's the same thing here. So uh, it's an interesting deal. I wouldn't say I, I wouldn't be I would be lying to you if I said it wasn't a little strange. But um, yeah, as the years progress, and this is the fourth time now, it's uh, it's the novelty's kind of gone grown, uh, gone away just a little bit. Do you still have uh, you know people or, or teammates or friends in the community that you go visit every time? I know some players do that, like when they're visiting uh, a different team or a city. There's always that one person that they're always you know connect with when they're there. Uh, weirdly enough, it's been my wife the last two times, just because that's home base for us. So I'll get to see them and the family. Um, Besides that, I, I like to treat these these uh, these things as business trips. I'll see the family, and then I understand that since I live there in the off season, I'll do whatever else I want to do. But for then, just kind of focus in on what we got at, at hand, which is something special. So uh, I might grab some specific food, uh, you know, some specific barbecue. Besides that, see my wife, and then just kind of get in the game mode. Well, I was trying to find a reservation for dinner Saturday night, and there's something called like Restaurant Week this weekend. There are oh, yeah. no res reservations anywhere. Um, it's been a little crazy, especially if you're looking for steakhouses. So I don't know if you have any inns, but, um, but <laughs> yeah, there's a- I might have a few inns. We'll, we'll chat after this. Yeah, yeah. I, I, might, I might be able to help you out. Um, Mitch, speaking of maybe getting some barbecue at a specific place, there's going to be a lot of Bills Mafia who do travel for this game. So uh, if you could give a couple recommendations to fans, where would you say are some places that you enjoy eating or some places that you think are worth hitting for people that are just in town for the weekend for the game? Uh, I would say, I mean, if you're, if you're around downtown, there's Jack Stack right there. There's a few of those, which is really good quality food. Um, if you have some time, go hit up Gates Barbecue. It's one of the old time ones. And then there's uh, Kansas City Joe's, which has something called the Z-Man Sandwich, which is on fire. Um, but besides that, just, I mean, whatever they go eat, snag some food, get the vibes right, party, liquor it up, because we, we're going to need that juice from the from the mafia coming in. It'll be fun. Whatever they do, I hope they enjoy it and bring the, the funky juice. Well, that, this is this is kind of a little bit of hometown, the state of Missouri for you. How many family members are you going to have coming to the game? Uh, yeah, that's a. I, I think as the years progress, we they try to keep it a, a small group, and uh, at first it was kind of this you know this big group, and it's kind of dwindled down just to. Uh, so just I'll just have three: my wife, uh, her sister, and one of our really dear family friends. Um, but besides that. You know, the family understands that uh, they might want to just watch it at home because they can get a little rowdy, which is cool. It's fine <laughs> by me, but uh, it's, uh, you know, so they, 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 they've weathered this farm before. They, they, they enjoy it, but, um, you know, I think they're, they're at a point now where they'd rather just watch it at home, be able to use the bathroom whenever the hell they want and, and go from there. I have, I have family coming as well, and sometimes when they ask if they can go, I'm like, oh, because, like, yeah, you know, <laughs> Obviously, you're a lot busier than I am on game day. But again, trying to, you know, this is a game. It's, you know, it's, it's work. And, and you're like trying to have to take care of family totally. and their tickets totally. and you know, how they're getting from their flight and where they want to eat. Like, it's, yeah, it, it gets very distracting. So I don't I mean, blame you for keeping the. No, the for sure. I, I would, I would, I'm sure you would agree with part of it's just like, you got to figure that stuff out on your own like I'm, I'm yeah. in the mood and, and over the years they've been very good about that I've never had problems but sometimes my buddies would text me on game day I'm like I got stuff to do dude <laughs> I got my head is in a completely different space yeah well I, and I always have people that are texting me during the game people like that I don't really know all that I'll, or I don't talk to a lot and I'm like why are you texting me in the middle of the game I don't know what the hell they're expecting you to do <laughs> I know I just like, it's, it's wild but uh yeah, I come like, from a good place I'm sure but we got it, it is but I'm like okay maybe there's some etiquette that we need to post <laughs> out there so but um but no it, it's it listen the O-line um especially of late has been terrific 
um, you know, the last several games. Um, so, I mean, you know, I know we're at the end of the season, beginning of the season. How has your group uh, evolved during the season to where we're really kind of, you guys are really hitting your stride right now? Yeah, I think it, part of it's, um, part of it's just communication. I think with, with protection, especially you have rules and uh, they're very finite and they might change throughout the week. So understanding, um, I mean, continuity you'd love to have, but in this position and in and, and this league, it's hard to come by, whether it's, um, you know, just personnel changes or injury. Uh, I, I think what we got right now is just guys who are gelling really well. Um, we've clocked in a lot of hours and the guys who maybe not have been starters, but ended up being starters took uh, their jobs, you know, quite seriously. They're uh, most professional. So when they stepped in uh, and I mean, even changing positions, maybe from a right guard to a left guard, it's not as easy as just switching up your stance. It's very complicated. So the guys really took an onus on that and the coaches put us in great position to, uh, and then Josh gets us out of a bunch of, a bunch of trouble. I mean, the dude is just, he helps us out and, uh, and we owe him a lot for that too. Is that the coolest part, Mitch, being a veteran now in the NFL and, and being a leader on this offensive line, just getting to watch some of those non-starters get into starting roles or just the way that the line has shifted the last couple of years with new players coming in and out, but getting to kind of see those little success stories of guys who have like worked their butt off all season and get an opportunity like Ryan Bates, for example, or Spencer Brown, another example, or even Tommy Doyle scoring a touchdown uh, last week has is that just fun to you knowing that, I mean, this is your seventh year in the NFL, just kind of seeing the success success of younger guys. Absolutely. I, I think something that's preached in every organization is when you get your opportunity, especially as a young player to seize your, your moment. And these guys have been doing an exceptional job of that. Um, you know, it was unfortunate stuff like Ryan Bates, you know, I'm very close with Ike and he goes down with a you know, season ending injury. Um, you mourn for the guy. And then Bates gets his opportunity and plays very well. So, um, you know, it's a double-edged sword. But when guys do get that opportunity, um, you know, there's – it's not like you when, you when you're in the when you're in the thick of it, when you're in the heat of the battle, it's not like you're babying guys. You know, they got to – you just got to – you sink or swim. We got a bunch of swimmers on this team that have done a really good job. Spencer well, Spencer Brown and Tommy Doyle um, – Brian Dayball, when we talked to him this week, he said, you know, those guys are kind of funny. Uh, what is it like to play with those two? And do you feel like you're at the point in your career where they say stuff and you're like, you are so much younger than me. I don't even know what you're talking about. Or like, you guys are just on your own planet. What are those two characters like? Because I know they like to build Legos in their free time, they told me. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird thing that's changed quite a bit, even in the seven years I've been in the league. Legos. The vets and when we have made Legos and vets would have kicked our ass. Um, I, I I would say uh, these guys first of all have accepted their roles, whatever they be, with the utmost professionalism. Um, um, you know, far above their years, and uh, and they're just gel guys. They get along really well. They've taken everything, you know, because you give rookies some grief. They they take it with grace, and they've been exceptional um sponges you know study hard play hard and you know they're like you said they're kind of reaping the the benefit of that right now and that's really cool to see and um yeah they're just good dudes they got great personalities and hell yes they say some stuff that just flies right over my head <laughs> but uh you know it's like dog years when you're in the nfl you know it's just like i'm a 49 year old man compared to a young pup here so uh it's all good well, I know that, as you said, consistency um, is is key. And I know that when Brandon, uh, you know, when we came went out and got you, we had just lost Eric Wood, which was unplanned. And for a team to be able to go from someone like an Eric Wood who had been here um, his whole career and then unexpectedly find ourselves, you know, without a center and then getting someone like you and the consistency that you have brought um, that just goes a long way to building the foundation. And we've seen the success of that. I don't think that happens all, all the time when you lose someone as key as Eric to replace someone else um, like him um, and get the production and, and the work that we've gotten from, from you. So it's just a great testament uh, both to you and, and Brandon for, um, and his staff for seeing that in you and feeling like you could be a part of this team. I think even from day one. It was it was an amazing boat of confidence. Um, you know, you you as a as a young professional. First of all, thank you very much. It means a ton. 
uh, as a as a young professional, you look at guys who have been in the league for a bit doing it. So when I came in the league, Eric would have been doing it for a very long time at a high level. Um, so you kind of you kind of fall if you, you find a center or two that you you you, you want to look at or you want to emulate your game off of, and he was definitely one of them. Uh, so I followed his career, um, and just like you, it was a cornerstone of this organization through ebbs and flows, through changes and management and all sorts of stuff. Um, and then to talk to him about that, you know, he found out about his neck injury at the birth of his son. And, uh, and I can only imagine what it's like to have your, your career after you just signed an extension kind of taken away from you also just shows that every snap, you know, you're not guaranteed. So, um, Brandon has been very gracious coach McDermott, you guys brought me in and it was, uh, it's been a really fun ride and I'm not looking forward to it being done. So let's, we gotta keep it, we gotta keep it going. And, uh, I've, it's a, great honor. I very much appreciate the kind words. I like that. Uh, I, I remember you coming to the team like it was not like it was yesterday because it wasn't. But I remember I was I just got hired by the Bills and it was after free agency. But I remember kind of following along and seeing a picture of you or video of you maybe at the um, at the airport when fans were, of course, doing their wings thing and, and making sure all the free agents uh, got wings upon their arrival to Buffalo. And very unique. Very creepy, but uh, right, very right, yeah, yeah. totally. And I'm like, oh, this is how they do in Buffalo. But Kim, I want to take you uh, down memory lane here. Um, Mitch, you make me feel a little bit old because we went to college together, Kim. And I feel like it, it seems like forever ago that you and I were at Mizzou and I was interviewing you um, as you were a part of a really great offensive line there with some awesome characters and some awesome guys, just like we have here in Buffalo now. But it's just funny how the sports world works. Like here, here we are <laughs> after we graduated from Mizzou and you are now in the bills and I'm still covering you. It's the sports world is so big, but it's also so small at the same time time and I love that I have connections with people like you to where I was able to come into the team and be like oh I know Mitch I got to cover him in college and we were both in school together so, I think you know, so true. yeah no exceptionally true one of those cliches are around for a reason right this is you know the NFL is a family uh depending on where you're playing and stuff so that was kind of one of those it was a whirlwind but it was a very unique moment I remember um you've been doing an exceptional job even since in the various days so kudos to you Thank you. Thank you. Um, what would you call the personality? What, what type of personality traits do you think this offensive line possesses? What, what do you think if you had to label them with one personality trait, what would it be and why? Um, you know, I think resiliency would be uh, the first one, but at the same time, it's such, football is such a melting pot in general of cultures, demographics of backgrounds and, and this O-line is no different. And that's what makes it so special. And guys are very open with each other and uh, open about, you know, coming from different backgrounds and stuff. And then you kind of you come together for this one common goal. And yeah, offensive lineman isn't a glamorous gig. You know, your dreams were crushed at some point. You didn't grow up wanting to be an offensive lineman. They said, hey, fat boy, move inside. <laughs> and uh, so you're already kind of coming with some self-deprecation. And uh, so I, but at the same time, as the year's gone on, I think resiliency is big, the biggest thing. And then um, – but through that, we've gotten very close and uh, it's been fun to kind of see different um, interactions kind of take place and guys really gravitating towards certain dudes that, you know, you wouldn't have had the opportunity to unless you're part of a football team like this. And Josh Allen, you know, um, does he give you guys uh, any incentives, whether, you know, to, you know, in protecting him, I, I know obviously it gives you guys a great Christmas present every year. Oh, um, I think like sweet. Most do, so, um, but you know, does uh, your relationship with Josh? Um, how has that developed over the year to to really get that that you know you guys really gelling on the same page and or actually anyone you know any of the receivers or running backs or any of those um, guys on the offense, you're on the same side, but your your job is so much different than than what they have, um, but oh. you're on the same side. So, um, you know, what, how has that relationship evolved? And what have you seen in Josh since you've been oh. here as he's progressed in his position? Well, one thing that hasn't changed, he's just one big kid, right? And that's what you love so much about him. He's, uh, you know, he's a ferocious competitor, commands a huddle, but at the same time, he's the goofiest dude I've ever been around. Um, and incentive-wise, it's just when you become, when, when, you, when you become 
friends with someone or a guy that you just want to, like guys want to gravitate towards, you want to do your job to make sure he doesn't get crushed. The worst thing you want to see is your guy come off on a block and crush the quarterback. So uh, yeah, he get, he gave us a kick-ass Christmas gift this year. That also helps, but it's not <laughs> like we're just like, guys, we got to block for them, but it helps a ton. Don't worry. I mean, I, he set the bar. The problem is the dude set the bar now. So uh, um, it, it's, whether it's receivers, running backs, quarterback, offensive line um this 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 unit this group has such a such a strong bond um it's it's very unique because our jobs are so very different like you said um but it, it's a hell of a time to be around each other and, and and in a huddle uh very constructive with each other even if things aren't going very well uh the receivers picking up the o-line and o-line to pick up the running back so on and so forth and at the helm is josh who walks in the huddle with confidence and that just kind of resonates with the rest of the guys. And uh, it's, you, 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 you put a guy at the head of an organization like Josh, good things are going to happen because he's just everyone's best friend in the locker room. And you want to go to battle for a guy like that. Did you feel at the uh, beginning of the game that you guys were going to go off like that um, Saturday oh, no. night? It's just, <laughs> it's just something that just kept, just kept rolling and rolling or, or did you kind of get a sense like, you know what, everyone is, we're, we're just locked in tonight. Um, I, you know, that's a, that's a good question. You'd like to say you plan on something like that happening, but you don't, it's just, uh, you, you, you kind of work on execution of that single play. You focus on your job and then, and then usually it's as, as cliche as it is. I know, I know it's, but excuse my language, but uh, like it is a family podcast. My mom's going to kill me. Uh, it's okay. uh, so my mom's gonna kill me but that being said um there was something special we understood we took as players onus of the game plan and then in the end you can do is just battle for each other and i think that's what we did and we did that by taking care of our job doing our thing and then it, everything else worked out from there so what do you tell your young rookies here as we head into the divisional round after you guys played a perfect game on offense? Here they are playing in their first playoff game, and they're like, oh, we scored seven touchdowns. Uh, I would tell them to, uh, to cherish that moment because it's probably never going to happen again. Uh, and that's not a bad thing. You can strive for it, right? But um, in a week like this, we're walking in a very hostile environment, um, you know, it, uh, I would also say don't change anything. And I think the biggest thing about teams that I've been on that have made pushes, including here in Buffalo, is that you understand the script that got you here. You understand the, the foundation that you've laid. You don't need to change everything all at once. You can just stick to your routine, stick to your process, understanding that the stakes are higher, but that doesn't mean you need to change much of yourself. Just understand that mistakes are amplified in the playoffs. And then one last one before we wrap up here, Mitch, um, do you ever like in the off season, I know a lot of people don't reflect during the beginning or during the regular season or playoffs because there's really no time to, but just in the off season, have you ever thought about how unique it is and how lucky you are that you've gotten to play for like two crazy high powered offenses in the NFL and two quarterbacks that are like incredible athletes I, I absolutely do. I think when, like you said, when you're in the thick of it, you don't really, you're not able to take a step back and realize it. But um, it's been a, I've had a remarkable ride with quarterbacks ever since Alex Smith took me under his wing his first three years, Pat, and then Josh these last three years. Um, I, I don't take it for granted. And that's why I, I'm trying to have more fun playing football because um, – you know, when you have 17 back there just making plays, making your life a lot easier, not every team has that. And, uh, and it took me a while to realize that. Um, but it's a beautiful thing, not to get weirdly emotional about it, but, um, you know, these playoffs are, you know, you, you can't take that for granted either. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a remarkable moment to be a part of this postseason run, any postseason run to get a chance. Um, so, yeah, you do your reflecting in the off season, and, yes, you do realize the – opportunities you've been given and the guys you have at your uh, I wouldn't say disposal but the guys you get to play football with it's, it's exceptional yeah definitely well, you, you you your O-line the offense the the team as a whole has certainly made it fun for our our community and the Bills fans everywhere when many of them will be in Kansas City 
uh, cheering you guys on as well. So thank you for all that you've done since you've been here and we look forward to continuing the ride. Uh, you like well said. Uh, hopefully those fans showed up just hammered. Have a good time. <laughs> let's let's uh, let's but I appreciate it and let's keep the party going. And uh it's been it's been easy to be a part of this this community because they've been so welcoming and it's just it's fun. It's yeah. a fun ride to be part of. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks Mitch. Mitch. A lot of fun to have Mitch on. He just has a good personality, is a good dude, and I will say he's not changed since since college. He always had that type of um, personality and like I want to have fun. I want to enjoy the moment. He was a part of a really fun offensive line uh, that I got to cover when I was at Mizzou. So it's just such a small world that now we're both in Buffalo together. Yeah, and no, no, no offense, Maddie, but he also seems like maybe maybe it's the shaved head that kind of seems like an old soul. And, and for you guys to be in college together, yeah, it, it didn't it didn't quite fit for me <laughs> at the time. Oh, but, uh, you are not the first person to say that, Kim. So many people. <laughs> When I've said that, they're like, wait, how old are you? How old is Mitch? And then I say how old I am. They're like, oh, Mitch looks so much like Mitch looks a little bit older. Maybe it's the maybe it's the shaved head there that he's got going on. But I'm like, yeah, we're we're in same age, same class. So too funny. Um, but Kim, Sunday night game, that means a regular week for you, a regular week for this football team, which I know Sean McDermott enjoys uh, staying on schedule as frequently and as much as possible in the playoffs it's not an easy thing to do so is that the same for you not an easy thing to do here as we head further and deeper into the playoffs I know we've talked about the fact that you're already planning for the s word um, and that those talks and plans are probably ongoing but as we get further here in the playoffs does does it seem like your weeks just get shorter and, and the time that you have in a day just feels like it's not 24 hours since there's so much to do and accomplish here? Yeah, it, it does. I'm back in Florida. I um, was able to get out uh, ahead of the big snowstorm that you all had and we'll join the team Saturday night um, in Kansas City. Um, it, you know, it'll be a, well, actually it's more of like a 5.30 game in Kansas City yeah. with a time change. And so not too different from a one o'clock, you know, home game. Uh, and we have had a lot of night games this year. We've had a lot of national games, which I think, honestly, Maddie, I think has helped our guys, especially Josh. It's the game, the, the time, the national attention has not been too big for Josh um, and, and the team as a whole. And we've gotten a lot more experience with it. So this game, um, although the heightened awareness that it's, it's the second round of the playoffs for sure, but um, being on that big stage, um, we will be just fine. It's not, it's not like late 815 game. So basically I don't have to wait as long. Uh, so yes, back to a little bit of a normal schedule um, and we'll, we'll see what ends up um, that night. We have played the Kansas City Chiefs quite a bit the last two years. This is going to be our fourth game against them. Of course, our second in the playoffs against the Chiefs. Um, since we've played against them multiple times, do you feel like you have familiarity with Kansas City now? I mean, Mitch told us a few places to go uh, if we're visiting there, but are you at the point where you kind of feel some familiarity with Kansas City now? You know what? It, it's funny because I, I was texting Brandon last night and I was like, hey, you want to make dinner reservations? Because as you know, we usually go out the night before. And I was like, what was that place we went to last time? He's like, well, last year we were in COVID. We didn't go anywhere. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I forgot. So honestly, I don't really remember um, going out in Kansas City. Uh, so um, I don't have any familiarity. Um, and just, you know, I just remember going through a sea of red. So just similar to our Bills Mafia and our home games, um, Kansas City fans, for sure, tailgaters, they show up, uh, they're all decked out in red. And so it is a tough place, um, it has a tough place to, to play in. And that fa fan base, um, rightfully so, has a lot to be excited about, especially the last you know four years uh, since Patrick Mahomes uh, kind of came on the scene. So um, just, know that it's going to be a tough battle um you know during the game on saturday i'm thinking to myself save some for next weekend <laughs> you know save some of those points right you never know uh when you're going to need them as we saw in some of the wild card uh matchups this weekend so some interesting things we saw this weekend as well in, in the other games um that uh made it for um exciting for fans of football um everywhere 
Yeah, consistency is key. Let's see if they can be consistent here on Sunday. Like Mitch said, I'm telling those rookies that something like that will probably never happen again, but maybe it can. There's a slight chance that the Buffalo Bills could just go off on offense again. I mean, I'm hoping for that because in a game against Chiefs, you know, you're going to have to score a lot of points because that's what the Chiefs do. Um, we rank pretty closely in them in the regular season in terms of offense and, and how powerful both offenses were. So it's going to be a crazy matchup. It's going to be intense. I don't think it's going to be like the week five game where we beat them 38 to 20. I know their defense has gotten a lot better since week five. So it's going to be, I'm going to be nervous all game, just like you will be. We only need one more point than they do. That's so true. we don't need to, you know, I mean, we could certainly put up 47. We just need one more point than they do. So I will be happy with that. Yes, me as well. Well, Kim, thanks for uh, hopping on the podcast this week again as we all prepare for the divisional round, an exciting game against Kansas City Chiefs ahead. And make sure you guys tune in next week because we've got more podcasts coming as we get deeper into the postseason. Exciting time to be a Buffalo Bills fan. That's right. Go Bills. <laughs>